Hey folks, Nathan, trans midwife, back again, back in this new setup. So, I have just done a lovely video about my beautiful kids and how they've accepted me as a daddy, dada, <laughs> which is lovely. Um, and now I wanted to do a video specifically about the complexities of having carried them as someone who is trans and how that has um, affected my feelings about my body, about surgery, about transition. So yes, I you, you'll know if you've seen my other videos, I carried both of my girls. Um, I was the gestating parent and I loved pregnancy and I also loved giving birth. We had two home births, which I plan on making a video, kind of a stories video about as well. Um, I also um, breastfed them both for 18 months, um, again, which I loved, which I miss. Um, and, and this might be hard for some people to understand these feelings. So to understand that I feel intrinsically as a, as a man completely, and yet I love doing those amazing things with my body. I mean, if you think about it, I'm sure there are plenty of cis men who've wondered what it's like, uh, wonders what it is like to have carried, birthed and fed children. It's probably the most miraculous, amazing thing in this universe. Um, and yeah, I just feel very grateful to have experienced it. I always wanted to. I'm glad I did. Um, and I cherish those memories. So... What does that mean for me as a trans guy? Well, it means I have some complex feelings about my body. And the reason is my body is like a map of the creation of my children. I mean, this this tummy, this uterus grew them, um, my genitals birthed them in an absolutely ecstatic, amazing birth and my chest um, nourished them um, and grew them into the amazing people that they are, helped them fight off diseases and all these things and yeah. And I'm very grateful to my body for that. That is, I mean, it still blows my mind and I'm a midwife and it still blows my mind what my body did for these beautiful people. And so, to think about changing that, to think about um, um, I, you going under surgery to change something that has done that for me and for my children is, is a really complex thing. It's something that I've never seen talked about on a YouTube channel, but it is something that I've seen in quiet, secret Facebook groups of trans guys like me. Um, and non-binary people, a lot of non-binary people have this sort of experience as well where they've, where they've carried children and then they're kind of having complex decisions to make. So specifically my decisions that would be affected would be um, chest surgery. So, you know, I'm grateful to my chest um, and, and the idea of, because of, it's literally like when I look at my chest, I have memories of feeding my children and although my chest literally is not good for anything else I hate it in every other way it has those memories so um you know there's a lot of pictures of me breastfeeding but I am even though I think I do need top surgery I feel a lot of sadness a lot of grief a lot of confusion and a lot of guilt about cutting off basically, I mean, it's not really what top surgery is, top surgery is a reconstruction, but in my brain, in my silly brain, I think of the words hacking off the incredible things that I was blessed with to be able to do that. And um, my feelings are very complex. The other thing is, if you've been on testosterone for a very, very long time, a lot of people find that eventually they do have to undergo a hysterectomy to remove their uterus. Um, not everyone, not everyone, but it's sort of an eventual thing, like 5, 10, 15 years. There's no exact time, but most people do in the end. And 
that's no to me. That at the moment, like I can just about get my head around um, removing my breasts because they cause such problems for me now. Um, my uterus doesn't cause any problems for me at the moment. I'm very lucky that testosterone has completely stopped my periods instantly. And otherwise, yeah, I mean, I don't feel it, doesn't cause me any issues. It might later on, it might start cramping or whatever. And maybe that would help. But for now, all it is is the precious memory of um, the house, <laughs> the thing that my kids grew in. And the idea, again, of someone cutting that out and removing that makes me feel angry, stressed, um, defensive. Um, yeah, so that's that's some of the more complex feelings that come from from having um, grown and, and fed my babies. The other the other complex thing is because um, I loved it so much, I really did. I've never written off the idea of having a third baby, and um, even though it's it wouldn't be a good idea for us, and you know I'm transitioning now, and I've, my career is so big and important, and my husband probably isn't up for another one, at least not for a several years, because he's a stay-at-home parent, and all of you stay-at-home parents out there have my greatest respect, because it's fucking hard work. But yeah, that's what he's doing, so he's like, I'm happy with the two. But yeah, I still do have some feelings that, hey, am I done? There's that question mark there, and if I... So I couldn't have two that I breastfed and one that I didn't. I would find that so upsetting and difficult. So then I'm battling with, well, I could have top surgery probably within the next sort of year and a half to two years. But will I know for sure by then that I'm not having another one? So yeah, I really, I really just wanted to make this video to connect and be the voice for people like me who are, it, you know, it's not straightforward. It's not just this linear, okay, I, I was born in the wrong body and I'm gonna move to the right body and then it will all be done. It's not like that. It's complex and it's about love and grief and um, do I need this part of me? And, and yes, I'll be happier, but, but will I miss it and the memories and, and obviously the thing to do is just to not get surgery until you're 110% sure because of course it is permanent and that is what I will do. Please don't worry about me. But, you know, I just wanted people to hear some of these complex feelings that us guys do go through. I think I just I just needed to say all of that and and sort of just explain that sometimes I have huge dysphoria and other times I feel very grateful to my body and I can't imagine changing it. Yeah. But the other problem is having kids changes your body so much so your hips widen and never really go back. Um, your breasts are obviously, they don't always get larger but some do and I think mine probably did. Um, my tummy is soft, it'll never go flat. Um, it has a lot of I feel I've got stretch marks everywhere and all this stuff. So it, you know, and I've seen guys who look amazing who had babies before and transitioned and they do pass really well. And, and, you know, I know it's possible, but at the moment it feels like some kind of pipe dream that I could ever be taken seriously as a man and pass as a man in society. And I know that people will comment like, oh, you know, passing's not the end goal as long as you're comfortable. I'm like, you know, I know that. And there are a lot of people who are happy never to pass, but this is, it is probably my goal, honestly, is, is to be able to walk around the world um, and be seen as a, a man and a dad. And yeah, so there's a lot of complex stuff there um, and I might leave it there. But please, you know, reach out to me if you have similar um, experiences and, you know, because there's not a lot of us who are very vocal about it because it is a bit stigmatised, you know, and, you know, you can get called not a real man for having these feelings. And, yeah, so we, we can pull together. Um, if you want to find any of the, any of the um, brilliant 
UK secret parenting trans groups. I am part of them. I can get you in if you need to be there. So yeah, hit me up anytime. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please, um, you know, like, subscribe, share, um, and get these get these important messages out there. Um, there's a lot of teaching on my channel, so yeah, please give it a subscribe and a share. Thanks so much.